Um, you know, just take us forward from where you got it there. It's saying something similar about the importance of sustaining the conversations. And our question at the end of the last session was, how do we do it? Do you, and even if we've just got one or two ideas... because we all look so dark tired. <laughs> Speak for yourselves, I'm fi- <laughs> Don't you dare yawn, your That's a problem, isn't it? That's right. That's right. Energised, you know. Yeah, so energised by it. It's exercise. It is exhausting. It was like we were talking to Carol this morning and she couldn't get the word out that she was trying to say. And she said, I'm too tired. And I went, I think I'm too tired to listen. And it was that... Do you know, because quite often you can fill in some of these words. Yes. You know oh, what they're trying to say. Oh. You have to guess the word for them. That's shocking. <laughs> I was too tired to do that. I was too tired to say the word. You had something really powerful about with the keynote. I could with... see you framed against that window, and I'm can... looking to see whether you're pointing at Okay, right. Well, let's start off. Let's just kick in and yeah. let's see what happens. Yeah. Because um, for me, this experience of sharing ideas that connect so much with what I'm trying to do in the world has been profoundly insightful but really passionately exciting and I know from past experience that we often have these experiences at con conferences but then there's an interruption in that going out swimming against the tide in a world that's going in another direction so for me the big issue is how do we keep that conversation going as mary's raised so that we don't lose that passion that excitement that connection but we somehow instead of bouncing from one conference to another when we've lost the passion somewhere in between how do we keep connected keep those ideas going keep that that connection with each other going so that it becomes something that evolves in a way that has potential to change how things are yeah. rather than just contextualize it and lose it when we lose the context can i just take them the how yeah just yes. that question how to do it now mary and myself have never done anything in terms of a joint paper before yeah now, we're due to start planning, aren't we? Uh, yesterday, <laughs> we were due to start planning. Yeah, a, a joint paper where we could actually make this part of the focus, you know, couldn't we? In terms of what you've just said, bringing that energy, and where you talked about that passion, which is there, and I felt this very strongly with Mary as you've been contributing. And I think we could make that something that you and I say, well, this is what we're going to try to do. You know, so each one of us, I imagine, could just start to try and say, well, how, how are we going to? And yes, I, th- I, think that's, I think the idea of identifying something that could be a collaboration coming out of a particular um, insight um, is, is very exciting. Yeah. And I was thinking about the other stuff we did on if, if passion is so important to connection, to inspiration, to compassion, to change the world, how do we name that state of being in order for other people to be able to understand what that's about and to be able to offer it as, as the discussion this morning was going on, as evidence for people who need evidence. But of course it's it's an experience, but I do think there are ways of capturing it mm. as evidence. One of the ways is to ask children. When I speak to my granddaughter, I'm so excited about school. I learn such exciting things and then I just have to ask how that happens and what makes it so exciting. But it's about how we name that passion. Well, it could so be. I think that's, that's good. Yeah, Marie, it might just be that Marie can make a contribution if she fancied it. Where today, I think she was trying to name those passions as they were being expressed. Mm. You know, within the writing, that loving recognition, uh, the respectful connectedness, educational responsibility, those three in- values. Mm. Now, it could be that that might be, if she fancied it, be Marie's contribution. You, mm. you know, to try to say that notion of the naming. Mm then communicate it. And it might be that we could, you know, develop that kind of collaborative communication, mm. which would take your question, how do we do it? Mm. Anyway, it's the into action. Into action, yeah. 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 It's about, it then becomes something that is 
connection and action. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we're moving on. Yeah. And, and yeah. very often, action and the doing of something is done at quite a superficial level and thought about almost at a superficial level because yeah. you get wanting to do something and it doesn't necessarily come from this discussion and sharing of a, of a value perspective mm. which actually I think is probably the thing that can sustain action much more than the directives about action. Yeah. I wanted to um, yeah. actually take up something about I, I understand the question to be about how do we well, I'm hearing it as about how do we sustain ourselves when the going gets tough and the shit hits the fan and you've come up against the bureaucracy and all those kinds of things that happen. I don't think that's quite the same thing as going away feeling really energised because personally I couldn't sustain that level of enthusiasm. I'd be exhausted. <laughs> but, but what I'm hearing is a desire for a place to go or a space to go yeah. or people to connect with to remind myself you know that um, when I take on these things that seem you know, like why would anybody in their right mind decide that they're going to tackle the university about its anti-democratic processes today you know some place that you can go to touch well, you know, I've with just people. started um, um, a little blog on social dreaming mm -hmm. on the uh, the Con Ning site. Oh, you're blogging? Oh, good. Yeah, she yes. uh, started a blog <laughs> on social dreaming. And um, one of the things, uh, you know, somebody came up to me um, just now uh, and said, I haven't been to one of your social dreaming sessions, but I had this dream and it was all about, you know, and terrible things happening at work, you know. And I've got dreams too about terrible things that are happening at work. And you know, her dream was it, it didn't require much interpretation, but she woke up in the middle of the night angry. Yeah? And I too have a dream where I woke up in the middle of the night angry. And I have a a, a dream that surrounded that where I knew immediately that I had to do something from this waking up. And it wasn't until um, some time later that I understood the content, how the content of the dream was making me do that. So, I mean, I think, you know, connecting to our, uh, the huge intelligence that we have um, about the world as we see it and its complexity and filter for the purposes we have of, in, uh, of immediate engagement is, is actually very significant for action, actually. Um, and I want, to, I want to follow that up and identify those specific issues that you talk about in this social dreaming block. Well, I think that echoes what Marie said in her paper this morning. Which around involving the whole person and the sort of, and it was interesting that we had that your student then was talking about holis a holistic approach because I think what's coming for me out of our conversation is the sense of calm allows us to be fully human and we accept each other. There's an acceptance. So the, the, and there's something to do with the way in which people ask questions. Richard asked me a question, and I know he is genuinely interested, he's curious, and he's interested to know what I think about that question. And he'll take that opinion, he'll listen to it, and he'll remember it, and he'll put it with other opinions. You know, and it's, and, and there's a collective respect, which is sometimes love when you're friends and you've known each other for ages or whatever, you know, but there is a, a safe, it's a safe, I remember giving my first paper at Khan and feeling totally safe. Yeah. Which is quite something, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and, and Bridget coming up and saying, would you like to publish that in, you know, and feeling very um, vindicated or accepted. Or, or some word where we, we authentically recognise each other as fully human. And, and, that's, and that's, that's what other people see as an appalling challenge for action research because it could... It could ask you, it challenges your way of being and what more, what deeper thing can you do? The way that you act out in life and your epistemology or what you're on to questioning someone's ontology. What are what more profound questions? So we ask very big questions of each other, but we do it in a way whereby we can, we can ask the question of ourselves together, we're like 
Mary can give an extraordinarily courageous paper about a failed relationship and what went wrong and that she doesn't even know what's happened to the person. A story that began when I was thinking, well, what happened to that student? And the terrible thing is Mary doesn't know what happened to that You know, And these are things you wouldn't dare mm. share about your professional practice in any other arena, aren't they? But it, does that I make sense? Absolutely, absolutely, because that in it, to be courageous enough, you have to have a trusting environment. Yes, mm. yes, and then, which you need to learn to learn, you need to trust, don't you? And you contextualise the yeah, whole no. self then, so that you don't keep an emotional self apart yes. from that. But I was linking what you were saying to, was it Marie this morning? Yes. Um, talking about... Um, now, I'm paraphrasing here, but it seemed to me to be receiving new knowledge um, with gratitude. And I can't remember yes, what, it term, was. what term... It's a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. As a gift. Yes, the gift. Was that, yes. Is that right? Because I think um, this runs counter to the flow that's out there, which is a top-down sure, flow. Yes. So often, when we share yes. ideas, um, we're seen as standing up there to be shot down yes and i think what you're Questions describing are not, they're is not seeking us how we questions. honor how, how we honor um that preparedness to and we don't use questions as a weapon i mm. mean we do now and then but <laughs> on the whole that's not a thing that happens at calm is there is it no and it that's, isn't no that's quite an extraordinary experience as a young an experienced researcher giving that first paper and realizing that the questions are actually honest questions yes, out of interest. In the <laughs> they're not to trip you up, and nobody's being a prima, prima donna. Nobody's asking a question to expose your ignorance. It's not an examination. Yeah, and it's, yes. it's wonderful. And that is what allows you then to come and say, Well, I learned something from an issue in my life that went horribly wrong. Yes. And this is how I explored it, it's how I thought about it, and it's how I've learned, in a way, to live with it, but to live beyond it as well. Mm. And, and that is a, you know, a deeply human perspective, mm. isn't it? That's mm. I loved having John Elliott name inquiry as the basis of Khan, because actually, I don't think it's foregrounded enough in what we say about ourselves. <laughs> I think it's another of these implicit things that uh, is there waiting to be discovered, you know. But it's it's what we it's what we do. Um, but it was there right at the beginning, you know, at the inquiry, the the questioning basis of, but what we've, edu of, of hmm. education practice. I mean, similarly, this is really related because I think um, the foundation of every interaction that we have. Um, it is comes from the value base mm. and we've been working a lot haven't we with exploring how to set that uh, as the um, fertile ground for all of these things developing so if you say well what do you mean by that value base and I, I might see that as values of everybody's right to respect and dignity to be heard graciously and, and uh, to be in mutual reciprocal engagement and then there's a responsibility to ensure every stage of the process is actually consonant with what 